Welcome to A Great Cooker. I'm Sophronia. Today we're going to be making a gluten-free chocolate cake. And we're going to make it in the Instant Pot. Believe me, you will be very happy if you do this. This one has no artificial flavors, colors, preservatives, and most importantly for me, gluten-free. To start, I'm just going to follow the instructions that are on the box, on the cake box. We don't want eggshell in there. And for this one, it calls for two eggs, one cup of vegetable oil, one and a half cups of milk. I'm just using whole white milk. According to the box, before I add the cake mix, I'm supposed to stir this until frothy. Of course, this would go much better in my electric mixer, but um, <laughs> I've used that old girl and she is on her last leg. So I'm probably gonna ask Santa for a new one. I'm not sure exactly what frothy is, is, but let me work on this for a little bit. All right, I'm gonna add the cake mix. Now I'm feeling like I probably should have used a bigger bowl. <laughs> yes, I definitely should have used a bigger bowl. But it's not too late. All right, I'm just going to stir this until it's Mix this until it looks how it's supposed to look. I'm gonna cut a piece of parchment paper. You could also grease the bottom of the pan, but I'm just gonna do this. Let's see how well I did. That'll work. This pan is a fat daddy-o's. It's eight inches in diameter. And I believe that it is four inches tall. And the beauty of this is pan is that I'm gonna be able to cook this entire box of cake mix in just one pan. So I don't have to worry about trying to figure out how to layer it in the Instant Pot or how to um, cook it into two batches. I'll leave a link in the description in case you're interested in this pan. I'm going to drop this down a couple times just for the air bubbles to pop, come to the top. At least that's what I believe this is for. I don't know. My mom taught me to do this. Make sure and cover your cake with foil. And um, I would say try to, you know, cover it pretty tightly. And this will keep any unnecessary moisture from the pressure cooker from getting into your cake and making it soggy. I definitely recommend using a trivet so that you're going to be, you know, so that you're able to get your cake to get this pan back out of, to get it out of the Instant Pot when the time comes. To your inner pot, add one cup of water because we're gonna need this to come to pressure. And whenever I make a sweet dish, I use a colored ring and I use a clear ring for everything else. And that's how I try to keep that nasty taste from getting from the savory food into the sweet food. So I switch to this red ring and go ahead and lower the cake pan down into the Instant Pot. And if you need to set your uh, top to ceiling, make sure it's on ceiling and not venting. Since we're cooking one cake, a very, you know, very thick cake um, in just one pan, we're not doing, you know, half the cake mix. We're going to make sure that we have enough time for this to cook. So I'm going to hit pressure and 
I'm gonna set this for 50 minutes and then we'll let it naturally release and see if it has cooked all the way. It's been a little over 20 minutes and the pin hasn't dropped yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and release the pressure the rest of the way. carefully lift up this foil. Oh, looks like a cake. Let's see if this toothpick comes out clean if it's insert inserted in the center. Actually, look at that. Looks like it could maybe go for a couple more minutes. On second thought, by this being a gluten-free cake, I'm not sure if that's an accurate way to tell if it's done or not. So I'm gonna take the temperature and I'm getting 191. So it might not be done because there's supposed to be around somewhere between 210 degrees for a cake. But look at it, it's so close. You probably can't see this on the screen, but it's literally at 196. I think I'm gonna put it back in for a little bit. That's okay, you didn't know. I'm gonna put this back in. My concern is that I don't want this to take to spend too much more time in here because it's so close to being done. What I think I'm gonna do is set it to oops, manual. I'm gonna go down to zero minutes. And then I'm also gonna just keep my eye on the time. And in about five minutes, I'm probably just gonna come and shut this off. It took about three and a half minutes for it to come to pressure. And then by the time it went off at the zero minute mark. It was about five minutes anyway, so I'll go ahead and release the pressure again. All right, the pressure has released. I'm gonna let the cake set up for 10 minutes. You wanna remove the foil and let it set for 10 minutes. Oh, well, despite my best efforts, still got a little bit of moisture in there. I'm gonna loosen this around the sides. Going next time, I would definitely either stick with the 50 minute time and then let it naturally release completely, or I would change the time to 55 minutes and then after a minimum of 20 minutes, naturally release. And either of those two ways should get you a fully cooked cake. Now I did cook this in the eight quart instant pot. So that's something to keep in mind as well. This appears to be loose. This is always the most nerve wracking part for me, making sure this is going to release out of the pan. So I'm gonna go around here twice. Okay, here's the part where um, pray or think good thoughts or whatever it is that you do for this. Let's see if it works out. It's still hot. Oh, it sounds like it released. Yay. I'm sure that the parchment paper made all the difference. So I would recommend it if you have it. And now I'm gonna let that cool completely. Okay, I've let the cake cool completely. It's been a few hours. And we're gonna go ahead and add our icing. I'm going to use some buttercream frosting. It's all icing. I didn't bother to bore you with that. So let's cut into this and see. I don't usually taste my food on camera, but um, I am curious to see what this tastes like because I've actually not had this cake before. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, wow, that looks moist. 
All right, let's see. All right, I'm gonna tell you the honest truth here. Wow, that fell apart. This seems very moist, but let's see. Wow. I almost wouldn't know that that was gluten-free cake, but let's not lie, it's gluten-free cake, but it's very, very good. Like this actually makes me happy to be able to have a piece of cake after three years. Try this at home, let me know what you think and leave me a comment about it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.